The name Beijing consists of two Chinese syllables, namely Bei and Jing. Bei, north, and Jing, capital city. Therefore, northern capital or capital city in North China. During the emperor's time, Beijing consisted of the city outskirts, the inner city, the emperor's city, and the forbidden city. Each city having been surrounded by a high wall. The front gate was the main one from the outer city to the inner city. Located here is the large square of heavenly peace, the stone monument of modern China. Its 44 hectares makes it the largest square in the world. The imperial city is entered through the gates of heavenly peace. On the 25th of December 1911, the mother of the young emperor Puyi announced his abdication. Thus, the empire ceased to exist. Nevertheless, at the gate, the benevolent face of the great leader Mao Zedong, which has become the symbol of modern China. Through the midday gate and over the Golden Water River, we reach the courtyard, three great halls, and at its center, the Hall of Highest Harmony. Officials and generals were permitted solely to use the extreme right entrance, whereas the middle entrance was only for the emperor. Even the princes were restricted to side entrances. Within the southern courtyard, the emperors held their official audiences and ceremonies. In the northern inner chambers were the living quarters of the emperor's family. In total, there were said to be 9,999 rooms, a number which symbolizes eternal power. The most impressive building works in China began over 500 years ago. After seven years in construction, the Ming Emperor Zhu Di moved into his newly established palace complex. Under the strictest ceremonial rituals, over 8,000 people lived here. Furthermore, the palace was to serve as residential and governmental seat to 24 emperors of the Ming and Qing dynasties. Here, the rulers greeted their ministers and generals, processed governmental issues, frequently too busy to leave the city to experience the calm of the heavenly temple or enjoy their summer residences. The central function of the emperor's palace is clear. Its size alone demonstrated that he was mediator between heaven and earth. The fascinating emperor's palace with its own embankment and surrounding walls and covering an area of 720,000 square meters is an awesome sight. The Emperor's Garden portrays one of the few areas in the palace grounds where green trees dominate, in contrast to the more austere areas. Beyond the garden, the Forbidden City is exited through the Gate of the Strong God, which leads to the northern part of the city. Just behind the car park and on the other side of the road is Coal Hill with its wonderful panoramic views. Each day the morning market is set up in front of the eastern wall of the palace. All that the surrounding countryside of Beijing has to offer is here. Appetizing fruits and vegetables, fresh milk products and much more. 
market stalls are set up on makeshift sites. At the rear palace wall and the water ditch in front, groups of elderly people practice rhythmic exercises or shadow box. Old men carry birds in bamboo cages, while hairdressers cut their customers' hair. In the drum tower, the roll of drums marks the change of the night shift, and in the tower, bells ring in the beginning of a new day. The garden of the old summer palace was once the most beautiful and lavish in China. Its creation began in 1709, and right up to it being destroyed by the French and the English armies on the 7th of October 1860, it was under continuous development. It took just three days to completely destroy it. It stretched across 864 acres of land and comprised 140 buildings, which were distributed throughout its landscaped grounds. For half the year, the garden served as the summer residence of the emperors of the Qing dynasty. After its devastation by the Europeans, restoration of the old summer palace began. But finally, in 1900, the Allied armies finally razed the area and destroyed with it a unique piece of horticultural history. A stone's throw away from the old Summer Palace is the Garden of Harmonious Unity, otherwise known as the New Summer Palace. For his mother's 60th birthday, the Yi He Yuan was an audacious gift from her son, the Qianlong Emperor. In 1751, he gave the order to rebuild the garden. It was built in the grounds of the Garden of Golden Water, and the Kunming Lake was extended. It was only in 1764 that the gift was completed. Its splendid grounds extended over 716 acres and soon it was the favourite garden of the Emperor's household, who retreated to its cool lakeside shores during the humid summer months. In 1860, the Summer Palace was destroyed. Money that was destined to go to restoring the naval fleet was diverted and went instead towards financing the restoration of the Summer Palace. Also in 1900, a second wave of destruction struck the palace. But yet again, the Empress, the widow Si Qi, was able to raise funds for its restoration. She spent most of her evenings at the Summer Palace to escape the gloomy confines of the Forbidden City. After her death in 1908, the Yi He Yuan was closed and reopened to the public in 1924 as the Garden of Harmonious Unity. The price of entry was so high that hardly anyone could afford to visit and it gradually became overgrown. Today, however, everyone can afford the entrance fee and large numbers of visitors pass through the East Gate, past the buildings and the theatre, and through the long walkway to the gate of the Jade Palace. After conquering the steep steps which lead up to the mountain of long life, there's a marvellous view of Kunming Lake the view is even more enhanced by the calm evening atmosphere. Twenty-five kilometers from Beijing, the mountains to the west act as a natural city defense. The highest point of the mountain range is Perfumed Mountain. 
During the Opium Wars and throughout the senseless destruction and looting orgies of the Allied troops, this magnificent park was extensively damaged and in 1949 only partly restored. The sprawling countryside has many entertaining facilities. A chairlift takes us to the top. From the summit there's a fantastic view of the western mountains and on a fine day a clear view of Beijing. Bordering the park is the Temple of Azure Blue Clouds, which became famous due to its marble Vajra Stupa. This splendid complex has built up the east slope, rising a hundred meters to the stupa. In front of the mountain gate, the main entrance to the temple, a white bridge spans across a ravine several meters deep, a stream running through. Two large lions guard the entrance and the bridge. Over a steep step and through a decorative marble gate is the majestic diamond throne of Stupa, 35 meters high and made entirely of marble. The Bamboo Garden Hotel is a wonderful parkland, which is the former residence of an aristocrat. Emperor Guanzhou founded the Garden of 10,000 Animals. Every year, 10 million visitors come to see the pandas. In the 10th century, the Bihai Park served as summer residence for the emperors of the Lao dynasty. The monarchs declared Beijing as their capital and had the Lake of the Flowers of the West landscaped. At the southern end of the lake, the island of exquisite jade was created and on a man-made hill, the Moon Palace was built. Also, the Round City was part of the Emperor's garden area. In the Ming Dynasty, a five-meter-high wall was built around it. There is an impressive feeling of peace and contemplation in the Park of the Sun Altar. Elderly people sit chatting and children play on the grass. In the center of the park is the Sun Altar, one of nine altars in the city devoted to the worship of natural strength. The Temple of the White Pagoda represents 900 years of history. And Kublai Khan had the 60 meter high white stupa built.
The Lee Wan Theatre offers colourful and lively excerpts from the famous Beijing Opera. In a one-hour show, the rich traditions of Chinese folklore are presented. At the main station, around 200,000 people meet daily. The hustle and bustle is indescribable. The new Beijing has modern skyscrapers and shopping centers. In Beijing, the Palace of Harmony and Peace is the largest Tibetan Buddhist temple. Passing through the south gate, a long stretch of garden appears, and through a further gate, an extensive inner courtyard with both a drum tower and a bell tower. In the Hall of Heavenly Kings, to fend off evil spirits, four severe-looking figures stand guard. The Hall of Harmony and Peace is guarded by the Buddha statues of three worlds, the future, the present, and the past. The Confucius Temple was built in 1306, in keeping with the old buildings on the right of the Emperor's Academy. Accompanied by his officials, teachers and scholars, each time the Emperor visited the Academy to hold lectures on classical Confucianism, he went to the Confucius Temple to demonstrate his devotion Famous are the stone plates and 198 slabs with the names of those who passed the Emperor's official examinations. The Fa Yuan Temple, Temple of the Source of Law, is one of the oldest in the city. Already in 696 AD, the first temple was built here. Burnt down many times, but always rebuilt in grander style. In the 18th century, Fa Yuan Si was constructed as it appears today. Six main halls lie on a north to south axis 180 meters long. Inside the largest of which is a Buddha from the Ming era. In the center of the Muslim quarter is the New Zhe Mosque, the largest and oldest mosque in Beijing. Just beyond its entrance is a domed moon observatory, from which the time was determined by tracking the stars. All that remains of the temple grounds is a magnificent brick pagoda. The Temple of the White Cloud was of great importance during the Yuan era, as Kublai Khan promoted a Taoistic priest called Qi Shuji from the province of Shandong to the position of national teacher. As such, he was head of all Taoistic sects. Later, the temple became the center of the northern sect members led a life of celibacy and strict vegetarianism. Perhaps due to the presence of a strong militia, the temple survived the Cultural Revolution. Since 1982, once again, 
monks have been instructed here. There are rows of halls from north to south, which are flanked by further buildings to the east and the west. The Temple of Five Pagodas, also called the Temple of True Awakening, was built in honor of an Indian monk. The Heavenly Temple represents the largest temple grounds in China. It should have been named Heavenly Altar as prayers are offered to heaven and earth at the same time. The Heavenly Altar is a marble structure covered in both earthly and celestial numeric symbols which portray Chinese cosmic illusions. The temple complex was built in 1420. It consists of three terraces. The one at the base symbolizes earth, the middle the mortal world, and the highest heaven. The holy number nine, or a number that is divisible by nine, determined the architecture of the emperor's buildings. By this calculation, the stone rings at the altar were devised. Cosmic illusion is signified as a complete entity. Heaven is imagined as being round, Consequently, the three central buildings around. While the altar and hall of harvest sacrifice is square and covered with green bricks to portray earth. Prior to the Mandarins, the Ming Dynasty was tantamount to the purest Chinese imperial culture and race. 50 kilometers northwest of Beijing, they constructed the Necropolis. This valley offered them natural protection against the spirits of the north and the sandstorms of the Gobi Desert. In 1435, this avenue of stone statues was created. Twelve animals and twelve men in pairs guard the path of souls, a stately entrance to the Valley of Tombs. The only accessible tomb was that of Ding Ling, the 13th Ming Emperor. By chance, archaeologists discovered an inscription which led them to a vault. Especially ironic, as no other emperor was as fearful of tomb raiders. Chang Ling, burial place of the Yong Emperor, is an imposing monument. It contains three courtyards in succession and the enormous Hall of Mercy, the second largest wooden hall in China. 32 pillars, each 10 meters high, support the roof. This cedar wood grows only in the southwest of the country, nearly 4,000 kilometers from Beijing. It took three years to transport it to the tomb. Nowhere else do walls play such a prominent role as in China. Walls were sacred. During the Qin Dynasty, hundreds of thousands of laborers built a wall 6,000 kilometers long. During the reign of the subsequent Han Dynasty, the wall was extended to nearly 10,000 kilometers. But at the end of the Hin Dynasty, it was neglected. It was only with the founding of the Ming Dynasty that the old building works were restored and a new embankment built to protect against Mongolian troops. Construction took over 150 years. The average height of the wall was 7.8 meters and the foundations averaged a width of 6.5 meters. In the Qing era, the wall lost its importance and fell into disrepair. Today's tourist industry gave the wall a new lease of life as the government ordered sections of it to be restored and be available to the public.